Hi, welcome back for the second episode of the new and improved 1080 Passport. I'm your host, Daryl Hodges, the owner of Foreign Exchange Blu-ray Imports. Uh, we got a really action-packed show for you this week, so it should be a lot of fun. Uh, first off, I just want to say thanks to everybody that watched the previous episode and told everyone out there, all your friends and fellow cinephiles about the show. Uh, really appreciate it. And to the new folks checking it out, welcome aboard. Uh, hope you like it. For our first segment this week, we're going to look at a couple of releases that are on the horizon. Uh, first up is a box set by the British Film Institute, BFI, of four films by Hirokazu Koreeda. Um, the films included in this uh, four movie set are Afterlife, Nobody Knows, Still Walking, and Mabarossi. Now, it's kind of an interesting release because, of course, in the United States, Mabarossi was released by Milestone. But there were a lot of folks that weren't happy with the fact that their release of Mabarossi was 1080i. And then, of course, Still Walking got a release from the Criterion Collection a few years ago. So I think a lot of people will be very interested to see um, if, these, uh, if these movies are going to possibly come with new extras. That might sort of entice people to order the set, even if they've already got the Criterion Still Walking. Uh, but if not there's a possibility that people will kind of sit it out and hope to see that uh, the other three get standalone releases. Uh, I, I'm sure that there's a lot of people that already have the criterion still walking who would really like to see standalone releases happen for the other three, which is not totally unprecedented because you have to remember recently the BFI did their Woodfall box set and a lot of the films in that set, uh, I believe all of them actually, got standalone releases. So we'll just have to wait and see. For our next round of titles on the horizon, uh, there's a couple of releases from Studio Canal coming out in Germany that should be very highly anticipated. Uh, one of them is uh, Roman Polanski's Death in the Maiden, which I believe when I checked, this would be the first time that it's been out on Blu-ray. And the other release is Peter Greenaway's The Draftsman's Contract, which folks might remember hearing a lot about around the time when Yorgos Lanthimos' The Favorite came out. Uh, Lanthimos mentioned it as, as something that he... Uh, had seen in the past and, 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 and didn't so much come out and call it an inspiration, not that I recalled, but it was definitely something that he was cognizant of in making the movie. So these are both very exciting releases. Uh, the Draftsman's Contract uh, had been released in Japan a couple of times. Uh, last time I checked, uh, it had been out of print for quite a while, so uh, it's possible it might have come back, but I really doubt it. So if this German... Blu-ray of the Draftsman's Contract is going to be English friendly. That should be really awesome because uh, that would put it back in print and presumably once it's been out for a little while the price would settle into being something that should be considerably cheaper than what the Japanese release used to go for. So that's really exciting. For our last On the Horizon segment for this week, uh, we're going to talk about a quartet of releases uh, announced by 88 Films featuring the great martial artist Jackie Chan. Um, back when 88 announced that they were going to temporarily, temporarily halt their Shaw Brothers uh, films releases, some, including myself, might have thought that that could be the last that we see of martial arts films from this particular boutique label. But apparently the martial arts are still alive and kicking at 88 Films. Uh, they released a quartet of Jackie Chan films uh, they did around a few months ago, including Dragon Fist and To Kill with Intrigue. And apparently those must have done well because they're back with four new titles, all of them from new restorations. Uh, it is Crime Story, Dragons Forever, Miracle, and The Protector. And so that is very exciting news if you're a fan of Jackie Chan. Uh, actually, the last year or so has been a tremendous time for Jackie Chan fans. Uh, there's been a ton of releases and new restorations, uh, plenty to be excited about there. So now there's even more to be excited about, so that's fantastic. All right, so for the B block on this latest episode, we decided to do a new segment. It's called Pod Spotting. Um, from time to time, I like to post about podcasts that I listen to. I get to listen to a lot of podcasts in the store, and I just thought I would share a couple that I thought that folks 
uh, watching this might be interested in. Uh, the first one is an episode of a show called The Close Up. Uh, it's the podcast of the Film Society of Lincoln Center. Uh, they hosted a conversation with Pamela B. Green, who is the director of a new documentary called Be Natural it's about the pioneering filmmaker Alice Guy Blachet. Uh, she talks about the film and she is joined by Jodie Foster, who is one of the producers on the film, and she's also the narrator of the documentary. Uh, Green brings a very interesting approach to this because even though she's a first time filmmaker, she's actually worked on something like 150 films prior to this because she does a lot of graphic work. So a lot of times if you've, you've seen a documentary and suddenly they'll have like a little animated segment or they'll have some, some really cool graphics that kind of bring the story to life, there's a good chance that you've seen her work. Uh, she's a really interesting personality talking about what it was like getting her film made, having people tell her, you know, do this, don't do that. And then just kind of plowing ahead and, and fighting to make this film work. And, and in the way that it unfolds, I, as she describes it, it almost kind of plays out like a mystery film. So, uh, if you happen to be watching this and you're in the Los Angeles area, I believe that it's opening uh, the weekend of the 19th uh, at the Lumley Monica Center. And then from there, depending on how it does, hopefully it will expand and move to different markets so that for those of you uh, throughout the country that are watching, you'll get a chance to catch up with it. That would be fantastic. Um, for the second podcast that I've listened to in the last couple of days that I really wanted to spotlight, um, there's a new film comment podcast, uh, which hosted a conversation between their edit, uh, editor in chief, Nicholas Rapold, and uh, the great French director, Claire Denis, uh, who's there with one of the stars of her film, Robert Pattinson, talking about uh, the movie High Life. Uh, if you haven't heard about this movie, it's a, a film that takes place in space. Uh, is a very interesting conversation. Of course, Claire Denis is always interesting. And it's, it's kind of fun where at one point, uh, Robert Pattinson was talking about the fact that uh, at a certain point, he went to one of the local video stores here in the LA area, and he stocked up on all of Claire Denis' films. And he sort of, uh, she told him not to use the phrase binge watching, but he basically like watched a, a bunch of her works. And uh, a couple of folks on the internet were trying to figure out uh, what the video store was, that because they didn't say specifically which one it was in the podcast. Uh, uh, Cinephile piped up and said, hey, you know, uh, Pattinson has a tendency to drop by from time to time, so it might have been them. But I know, speaking personally, that about a year or so ago when I went looking for Claire Denise Beau Travail, uh, I went to multiple video stores in the area, and uh, I only found it at one of the local video stores, and it was not Cinephile, so... Uh, the jury's still out on which place uh, Pattinson actually went to, but uh, yeah, no, apparently uh, he likes to hit the video stores like the rest of us. For the final segment of this episode, we're going to try another new segment, uh, something we kind of brainstorm. we're calling Top Teens. Uh, all right, so th basically the premise here is that one thing that movie lovers enjoy doing is making lists, and you're always seeing these lists online you know, top 10 this, top top five that, top 100 this. And the problem with these lists is that a lot of times, if it's like the top five or top 10, it's the same things that you've heard over and over. So we just thought it'd be kind of interesting to do a list where we don't give you the top 10. We don't even give you the top 12. We give you the top teens, 13 through 19, and that's it. Uh, now, obviously, uh, when we try to brainstorm for what would be a good segment to do right now, I thought, well, we could do something about sports movies. Because right now, if you're a sports fan, it's actually a really interesting time of the year. It might even be the best time of the year to be a sports fan. Uh, you've got March Madness just wrapped up. Virginia won the, co won the college basketball title. Uh, you've got the NBA and the NHL playoffs just getting underway. Uh, you've got the Major League Baseball season just starting off. Very interesting there. And if you're a football fan, you've also got the draft coming up and you've got free agency and you got guys, you know, signing big deals. Actually, no, you don't have free agency, but you do have guys signing really big deals right now, like Russell Wilson. Uh, all right. So that's going to be our subject for, for this particular segment. Now, obviously, because this is top teens, we're not going to include movies like 
Raging Bull, which is flat out one of the greatest movies of all time, sports or otherwise. Uh, we're not going to include uh, documentaries like Hoop Dreams, or we're not going to include Rocky or Breaking Away or Rudy, because obviously any list of great sports films is going to have those movies. We're going we're gonna to try to find you know the deep cuts or the deeper cuts that maybe you may necessarily have heard of or have come across, but you know, you get to hear about something new. All right, so for our first teen, uh, we're gonna talk about movie number 13. That is Eight Men Out by John Sayles. Uh, it's a movie that's been out, I guess came out probably about almost 30 years ago, so a lot of you younger folks out there might have never even heard of it. It's a film about the uh, 1919 Chicago White Sox. It's based on a true story. Uh, the White Sox uh, went down in infamy as the Black Sox because they were a team who were so mad at their cheap owner, Charles Comiskey, that they actually conspired to throw the 1919 World Series. And as a result, they were banned from baseball. And among their ranks was a player named Shoeless Joe Jackson, who to this day still has the second highest batting average in Major League history. And in what would otherwise be a Hall of Fame career, he is still not in the Hall of Fame because of his role in throwing the World Series. Again, directed by John Sayles and starring a young John Cusack. Uh, it was a great cast, actually. And uh, fantastic film. If you haven't heard of it or seen it, definitely try to check it out. I believe it's on Blu-ray domestically. All right, so for number 14 is another one that, that uh, you know, you might have some people say, oh, is that even a sports film? It's Rounders by John Dahl. Uh, it's a film about... Um, playing cards, you know, playing poker. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, there's some people out there who would say, well, you know, playing poker is not a sport, except, you know, if that's the case, then why did ESPN spend the better part of the 90s showing it on ESPN2 and getting actually really good ratings? Because there are sports elements to it, but because it's not your typical baseball, football, basketball, it doesn't have the same beats that you normally get. And this is a great movie because it's an awesome early performance by Matt Damon. You've also got a great cast with Ed Norton and John Malkovich. And of course, John Dahl is a fantastic filmmaker of the 90s. Um, he made uh, movies like The Last Seduction and Red Rock West. Some really awesome neo-noir films. Yeah, John Dahl, there you go. Uh, all right. For number 15, we're going to go with a film from the 70s, a film that it's actually, I'd be surprised if a lot of you guys actually know about this one. It's called uh, uh, Bingo Long's Traveling All-Stars and uh, Motor Kings. Uh, this is a film, and to my knowledge, it's one of the only films that really talks about the experience of players in the Negro Leagues as they used to what was called barnstorming the country back then, you know, in the 30s and 40s. Uh, if you were an African-American baseball player, you know, the teams, they would get together in these old beat-up jalopies and they would they would sort of drive them, you know, from town to town and, and they would put on these, these baseball games. And, you know, because they weren't allowed to play in the major leagues, there were some very talented players of that era, such as uh, Satchel Paige and Josh Gibson, who... Uh, were denied the ability to play in the majors for many years. I mean, Page, in his case, eventually made the majors uh, very, very late in his career, but, but, but he spent most of, the, most of his career playing in the Negro Leagues. And so this is a film that really sort of uh, attempts to depict that experience and, and the experience that those guys had. And, you know, it stars Billy D. Williams, and Richard Pryor so, and uh, James Earl Jones. So it's a terrific cast. It's just a fun movie. Um, it's one of those movies I looked into it to see. There's no Blu-ray release. I believe there's a DVD release. And as far as streaming, I think the only streaming service that had it was like Stars. So it's kind of hard to track down. But you know, it was one of those things where it was a stable on. on uh, it was a staple on uh, pay cable channels. Uh, you know, 10, 15 years ago, and I think that's how I saw it. But yeah, definitely worth checking down if you if you get a chance. All right, for the, our top teen uh, installment number 16 is a film by the Safdie brothers. It's called Lenny Cook. It's a documentary. Uh, 
Now, um, the Safdie brothers are probably best known for their film Good Time with Robert Pattinson. Uh, and then, of course, before that, uh, the work that they did on Heaven Knows What uh, as a film about, about heroin addicts. Um, but, you know, in between those movies are actually around the time of Heaven Knows What. They did this documentary about Lenny Cook. Uh, for those of you that might not be basketball fans, Lenny Cook is, is a guy that was a, was a high school phenom. Um, going into his senior year, he was considered the best basketball player in the country. He was very highly recruited. And at that time, I believe you could still go directly from high school into the NBA. And um, through a series of events, Lenny kind of gets some bad advice and falls in with the wrong crowd and, you know, has a couple of uh, encounters at some, at some uh, basketball camps, including a memorable one with a very young LeBron James that, you know, ended up lowering his stock. And he, he sort of comes across in the film as this sort of star-crossed person who uh, it, it gives you a look at, you know, what becomes of a guy once he's been through that situation where at one point it seems like he's got the world at his feet and then suddenly through happenstance things just go really horribly wrong and um i don't want to spoil the film but there's some really nice touches that happen at the end that i thought really lifted this beyond just your sort of the sort of thing that you would see in a 30 for 30 documentary and, and, and it transcends that to become like a really a great work of, of film art which is great because, you know, the, the Safdie brothers, again, they are a couple of the, uh, the biggest rising stars in the film world right now. So it's kind of an interesting look for them to have decided to kind of make this movie at this time. But, you know, I think is a decision that worked out really well because I think it's a great film. All right. For our uh, top team, number 17 is a film by Richard Linklater. It's called Everybody Wants Some. All right, now, uh, this is a film that I believe kind of was not well served by the fact that when it came out, there was a lot of marketing around the notion that, oh, this is like the sequel to Dazed and Confused. And there was a lot of people that were just looking for like Dazed and Confused Part 2. And, you know, it, it was not really that. So I feel like it was ill served by by the, the campaign. But the, the film is... Uh, very loosely based off of uh, Richard Linklater's experiences as a college baseball player. Uh, I believe he went to Sam Houston State, and uh, he was on the baseball team there, and he hurt his arm. And, uh, you know, at that point, once he couldn't play baseball, he eventually made that metamorphosis into a being, being a filmmaker. But, uh, you know, he, he mines this territory, which he's actually, you know, not a, although that it does – there's kind of a, uh, one of the storylines in Days of Confused relates to, you know, uh, the Wiley Wiggins character playing, you know, Little League. But also, you know, Linklater did Bad News Bears. And so obviously it's, it's, a, it's a topic that's near and dear to his heart. But just it's one of those movies where, you know, th there's the camaraderie between the players. And you really get the sense of, you know, this is a movie that's coming from the heart. Uh, and it's by a, by a guy who's been there. And uh, for him to share those experiences in this movie and to really sort of nail that, that dynamic of what it's like, you know, to be those guys, to be on that team. It's a really great movie, and I, I highly re recommend checking it out. All right, rounding out our top teen segment, here's uh, film number 18. It's a documentary called Ring of Fire. It's about the boxer Emil Griffith. Um, this is kind of a low budget documentary. The production value isn't exactly the greatest, but this is such a fascinating story that I really felt like I had to share it. Uh, Griffith was a very popular boxer, uh, during the late fifties and early sixties. And, uh, he had a fight in which went horribly wrong and resulted in boxing, not really being on television for the better part of 20 years. And I don't really want to get into the spoilers of the story, but, uh, but you know, the, the, the reason for things going the wrong in the fight have to do with uh, sort of, you know, the fact that Emil Griffith was living a sort of a double life and uh, his unwillingness to acknowledge that is, is one of the more uh, fascinating elements of the film. And so, uh, again, I, I think I, I, I heard recently that it was going, going to be actually, 
it was going to be made into a narrative film, so that could be interesting. But but yeah, uh, the original documentary has my fullest uh, recommendation. Definitely, it. I think it's kind of hard to see. I believe it came out on DVD. I don't think it's gotten a Blu-ray anywhere. And I think when I looked, I don't think there was really any streaming options. Uh, but yeah, if you managed to track it down, I definitely would recommend seeing it. And then finally, for our number 19 entry, I actually cheated and I chose two movies. We've got a tie because they're both about the same person. Um, one is a film called The Great White Hope, uh, which was loosely based on the life of the first black heavyweight champion of the Marcus of Queensbury rule era, that's Jack Johnson. Uh, it began as a stage play and was eventually turned into a film starring James Earl Jones. Uh, they don't explicitly refer to him as Jack Johnson, but uh, all of the events in the character's life closely mirror uh, the events of Johnson's life. And uh, I just, I'm a person that since I was a teenager, I've been fascinated with Jack Johnson. I just think he's the most incredible, fascinating character, one of the most interesting people in the history of sports. And so my uh, co entry at number 19 is the Ken Burns documentary, Unforgivable, Unforgivable Blackness, uh, about Jack Johnson. As I said, when I was a kid, I would try to find everything that I could on Johnson. Uh, I would scour through books looking for any kind of scrap about him. And so when this documentary came out, and I believe it's like a two part documentary, it's like three or four hours long, and it was just such a wealth of material in it. It just completely blew me away. Uh, I believe it's only available on DVD. I have the DVD. Uh, yeah, if you get a chance to, to, to check that out, I can't recommend it highly enough. Um, definitely give that a look. Um, so that is our top teen segment uh, for this episode. Hopefully we turned you on to some uh, new titles that you might not have normally heard about and uh, track them down and, and give them a look and see what you think. All right. Thanks for watching and see you next time.